Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Magic Gamer 74. I'm your host, Anthony Gamer, and in today's episode, we're going to be discussing the expansion Antiquities. The Antiquities set is one of the older sets, as it was released in March of 1994. There were 102 cards in the set, and the complete set itself is worth over almost $7,000, which means that the average card is worth around $63. Eh, it's kind of a little on the expensive side, but it's a pretty cool set, actually, for being a small one like it was. Those of you that like to put artifacts in your deck, this is definitely the set for you to try. If you haven't used some of the cards already. A lot of the cards uh, were actually reissued in later sets, and some of them are still being brought back today. If you play Arena, you've probably played a few uh, artifacts that originated in the antiquity set. Now before we get started, make sure that you read uh, that disclaimer in the, under, down there, <laughs> under there, under, under this video. Uh, it'll save us both a lot of headaches in the future. So without further ado, let's get into the cards. All right, so let's get started with our first card. And we are going to start off with white. Our first card for today is Argavian. I'm going to, I don't know, uh, Archaeologist. It casts for one colorless and two white. This creature's special ability is tap to white. Tap it. Return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. It's a 1-1 one, one creature. Okay, now, um... This is kind of an expensive card, and we're starting off really well, aren't we? And uh, this card will run you around $289, but I did some research, and I found a card that does sort of the same thing for a much cheaper price, and that would be this card, Treasure Hunter. It pretty much casts for the same uh, price. Um, it's a 2-2, two -two, and when Treasure Hunter enters the battlefield, you may return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, not the same thing, but, you know, it's the closest I could find. Uh, and this card is only going to cost you 22 cents. So, All right, and next up we have Argivian. I'm just going to use that word. Argivian Blacksmith. Uh, this 2-2 two -two creature casts for one colorless and two white. Tap it. Prevent the next two damage that would be dealt to target artifact creature this turn. Okay. If you would like to add this card to your white deck or an artifact deck or you're working on trying to collect the whole antiquity set, this is a card that won't cost you much. It's currently worth around 83 cents. All right, and next up we have Artifact Ward. This enchantment will cost you one white. Enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature can't be blocked by artifact creatures. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to Enchanted Creature by artifact sources. Enchanted Creature can't be the target of abilities from artifact sources. Nice. Uh, this card is also very affordable. It will run you around $70. Oh, and I forgot to mention, uh, these first three cards I have discussed, none of them were reprinted. All right, and next up we have Martyrs of Corliss. Uh, this creature casts for three colorless and two white. As long as Martyrs of Corliss is untapped, all damage that would be dealt to you by artifacts is dealt to Martyrs of Corliss instead. And they are, excuse me, and this is a 1-6. Uh, pretty cool card, actually. Um, especially if, like, some weird artifact creature is going to be doing damage to you. It, and you're like, no, it goes to that guy. Uh, this card's a little on the expensive side, not really. Uh, it currently is worth around $16, and it was not reprinted. And our final white card for today is Reverse Polarity. This instant casts for two white. You gain X life, where X is twice the damage dealt to you so far this turn by artifacts. And you know some of those artifacts creatures can be quite huge. There's one that I play with in my artifact deck on Arena that's an 8-8 or a 10-10, so oh boy. And best of all, this card is not too expensive. If you'd like to add it to your collection or a deck, it currently costs you 73 cents, and it was reprinted one time. 
Okay, next up, we are starting blue. So let's go with our first blue card, and that is Energy Flux. This enchantment casts for two colorless and one blue. All artifacts have, at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice this artifact unless you pay two colorless. Oh, yeah. That is really fun against somebody who has one of those annoying artifacts like millstones, grindstones, or, you know, something like that. Oh, yeah. If you would like to add this card to your collection, it's a little on the expensive side, not a whole lot. It currently is worth around 15 bucks, and it has been reprinted several times. All right, and next up we have Hercules Recall. Gotta love that artwork. Hello, nurse. <clears throat> anyway, uh, this instant casts for one colorless and one blue. Return all artifacts target player owns to their hand. Oh yeah, that's a fun one. However, this card's a little on the expensive side. If you would like to get a hold of this rare, it will cost you around $105, but it has been reprinted several times. All right, and next up, we have Reconstruction. This sorcery casts for one blue. Return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Oh yeah, this is a card you've got to have if you have a, <clears throat> excuse me, an artifact deck for sure. This card won't set you back too much. It is currently worth around one dollar and twenty nine cents, and it was reprinted one time. All right, and our final blue card. Yeah, we're just going right through them today. We're gonna have this wrapped up in one episode. So, all right, and our final, like I said, our final blue is Sage of Latinam. This creature, human. Artificer, artificer, excuse me. <laughs> Cast for one colorless and one blue. He's a one two. Tap, sacrifice an artifact, draw a card. Yep, desperate times call for desperate measures sometimes. Yep. Uh, cool artwork, although honestly, I think the guy is obviously studying too much and he let his beard get a little out of hand. I wonder if he trips on it when he walks. Anyway, if you'd like to add this card to your collection, it is not very expensive. It currently is costs around $2.38, and it has been reprinted a couple times. All right, now we are into black, and the first card is probably one of my most favorite cards in this expansion, one that I readily play with, and that is Artifact Possession. This enchantment casts for two colorless and one black. Enchant Artifact. When... Whenever Enchanted Artifact becomes tapped or a player activates an ability of Enchanted Artifact without tap in its activation cost, Artifact Possession deals two damage to that Artifact's controller. Oh yeah. If you'd like to add this to your black deck, um, it's not going to cost you much, as this card is currently worth right around $1, but was not reprinted. All right, and next up we have Phyrexian Got, uh, gremlins. Now, uh, yeah, you're hearing the term Phyrexian. Uh, now, of course, we hear this all the time now if you've been playing some of the recent uh, sets of expansions and online. Don't forget the story behind this whole expansion is the start of the Brothers' War between Urza and Mishra. This is where it all started. Um, so, these bad little buggers... Uh, these little 1-1 one, one creatures cast for two colorless and one black. And I know you're thinking, that's a lot for a 1-1 one, one creature, but listen to its fast effect. You may choose not to untap Phyrexian Gremlins during your untap step. Tap. Tap target artifact. It doesn't untap during its controller's untap step for as long as Phyrexian Gremlins remains tapped. Imagine slowing down one of your opponent's big artifact creatures. If you'd like to add this to your collection or put it in a black deck, it will only cost you $2.31 and it has not been reprinted. Okay, next up we have one of the most practical cards in this expansion and that is Priest of Yagmoth. All right, this one two creature casts for one colorless and one black. Tap him, sacrifice an artifact, add an amount of black mana equal to the sacrifice artifact's mana value. Imagine that in times of desperation and you need mana really quick and you happen to have a artifact with a huge casting cost. Oh yeah. And if you'd like to add this card to a black deck or an artifact deck, it won't cost you that much. It is currently it will currently cost you around $1.82 and it has not been reprinted. Alright, and next 
up, we have our final black card, and this is Zenic Poltergeist. Uh, this creature casts for one colorless and two black. It's a 1-1 creature. Um, tap until your next upkeep. Target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness equal, uh, each equal to its mana value. Oh boy. Yeah, that could be a real fun card. If you'd like to add this card to your collection or throw it in a deck, it's not going to cost you that much. It is currently going to cost you around 5 bucks, and it has been reprinted a couple times. All right, and we move right into red with one of my favorite creatures from this set, Atog. 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 Love saying that. Anyway, this uh, cool-looking little creature uh, casts for one colorless and one red. It's a 1-2. Sacrifice an artifact. Atog gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Just imagine uh, if you happen to have one of those cards that makes little artifact creatures... You sacrifice a whole bunch of them, and you got yourself a pretty big creature that you brought out for the casting cost of two. Awesome. This card's not too expensive either. Uh, it will currently cost you almost three bucks, and it has been reprinted several times. All right, and next up, we have another really awesome card, and that is Detonate. This sorcery casts for X colorless and one red. Destroy target artifact with mana value X. It can't be regenerated. Detonate deals X damage to that artifact's controller. Boy, that could really ruin someone's day, I tell you. Definitely a card that I've got to put in my artifact deck. All right, now, if you would like to add this card to your artifact deck or your antiquities collection, it's not too expensive. It will currently run you about 7 bucks, and it has been reprinted a couple times. All right, next up we have a card that... This type of card I usually don't recommend because I hate cards that have coin flips, but uh, Garb, Goblin Artisans. Uh, this is casts for one red. It's a 1-1 one, one creature, which is why I'm recommending it because I always recommend any 1-1 one, one creature that casts for one. Uh, if you like to use its fast effect, it is. Flip a coin. If you win the flip, draw a card. If you lose the flip, counter target... Artifact spell you control that isn't the target of an ability from another creature named Goblin Artisans. Okay, uh, this card won't set you back too much. It's currently worth around four bucks, and it has been reprinted two times. All right, so now we are on our final red card. And this is also a real fun card that will certainly make somebody cry. And that is Shatterstorm. This sorcery casts for two colors and two red. Destroy all artifacts. They can't be regenerated. Oh yeah, what a fun card. However, the price is not so much fun. If you would like to add this card to your deck or purchase it for your set, it's going to cost you a little bit. It is currently worth about 58 bucks, but it has been reprinted several times. And now we are on the color green, and our first card is Argothian Pixies. Uh, this creature, this fairy creature, uh, is a 2-1, and it casts for one colorless and one green. It's weird because it doesn't fly, but anyway. <clears throat> Argothian Pixies can't be blocked by artifact creatures. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to Argothian Pixies by artifact creatures. That is so nice. It's a pretty much an indestructible blocker, which is nice if you have somebody with one of those huge artifact creatures coming your way, you go, uh-uh. Nice. All right, now this card's not going to set you back too much. It's currently worth around two bucks, and it has been reprinted two times. I actually got a couple of these in my green deck. All right, and next up we have the Argothian Tree Folk. Now, I love Tree Folk. I put them in uh, the series of fantasy books that I wrote before. I love the creatures. The only problem is they usually have a high casting cost. However, this one is worth it. Now, this creature casts for three colorless and two green. It's a 3-5. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to our Gothian tree folk by artifact sources. Oh, yes, that is so nice. Especially, like I said, you got a big artifact creature coming your way and you're like, uh-uh, not happening. If you'd like to add this card to your deck, it won't cost you too much either, as it is only worth about 92 cents, and it was not reprinted. All right, and next up we have the how do you, uh, 
Citadel Druid. Yeah, it casts for one colorless and one green. It's a 1-1 one, one creature. Whenever an opponent casts an artifact spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on Citadel Druid. Oh, man, yes. Especially if you know your opponents and you know that they love playing artifacts. I mean, one of my best friends that I play with loves to use grindstones and millstones, so this this would be awesome. However, this card will set you back just a little bit if you'd like to add it to your green deck and make one of your artifact-loving friends cry. It's going to cost you around 23 bucks, and this card was not reprinted. All right, and next up we have Crumble. This kind of looks like a school that I used to work at. And it was actually still open when part of it crumbled, but that's a story for another day. Anyway, this instant will cost you one green to cast, and it is an instant that destroy target artifact. It can't be regenerated. That artifact's controller gains life equal to its mana value. Now, of course, you could use this on yourself if you were in desperate need of life. Um, definitely something that can help you in hurt your opponent as well so great all-around card and the best part is this card is not expensive uh, if you'd like to add it to your collection it will currently cost you around one dollar and 24 cents and it has been reprinted several times and next all right and next up we have power leech i actually think i have this card um i had to dig through my collection but i swear i saw it in there and this is an enchantment that casts for two green whenever an artifact an opponent controls becomes tapped or an opponent activates an artifact's ability without tapping in its activation cost you gain one life oh yeah this card's a little on the expensive side. If you would like to add it to your collection, it will currently cost you around $36.50, and it was not reprinted. All right, and our last green card for today is Tatiana's Song. This enchantment casts for three colorless, one green. Each non-creature artifact loses all abilities and becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness, each equal to its mana value. If Tatiana's song leaves the battlefield, this effect continues until end of turn. Oh yeah. Nice. And if you would like to add Tatiana's song to your playlist, I mean your deck, it'll cost you a little bit. Uh, this card is currently worth around $12.29, and it has been reprinted a few times. All right, and now we are starting the real meat and potatoes of Antiquities, and that is is the artifacts section and this is also where the big bucks come in as our first uh card is ashnod's transmogrant yep i think i said that right if i don't close enough all right uh it casts for one uh tap sacrifice ashnod's transmogrant Put a plus one, plus one counter on target non-artifact creature. That creature becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. All right, if you'd like to add this card to your collection or throw it in a deck, it's going to cost you a little bit if it is currently worth around $15.47, and it has been reprinted several times. All right, and next up, we have Clockwork Avian. This artifact creature casts for five. It's a flyer, a zero four flyer. Clockwork Avian enters the battlefield with four plus one plus zero counters on it. At end of combat, if com if Clockwork Avian attacked or blocked this combat, remove a plus one plus zero counter from it. Tap X, tap it. Put up to X plus one plus zero counters on Clockwork Avian. This ability can't cause the total number of plus one plus zero counters on Clockwork Avian to be greater than four. Activate only during your upkeep. Yeah, you can't really pump it like you would a Sheev and Dragon, but regardless, it's a zero four blocker, if nothing else. If you'd like to add this card to your collection, it's going to cost you a little bit. It will currently cost you around 24 bucks, but it has been reprinted several times. And next up, we have one of my favorite cards from this set to play against somebody, and that is Cursed Rack. It casts for four. As Cursed Rack enters the battlefield, choose an opponent. The chosen player's maximum hand size is four. And I think you probably know the card that goes with it. 
If you like to add this card to your deck and really ruin someone's day, it will cost you around $6.76, and it has been reprinted a few times. Next, we have a card that should be in just about every single deck you own. If you can afford it, and if you can't afford it, do it anyway. Get this card in as many decks as you can. This is Felden's Cane. It casts for one. Tap Exile Felden's Cane. Shuffle your graveyard into your library. I could have really used this card when I was playing on Arena today. Unfortunately, it hasn't been reprinted recently. Uh, last time it was reprinted was in Time Spiral, Time Shifted. And if you'd like to add the original Antiquities card to your collection, it's going to cost you around $10.28, and it has been reprinted a few times. Let's hope it gets reprinted really soon. Okay, next up we have another card that should be in just about every white deck, for sure, and that is Ivory Tower. It casts for one colorless. I keep saying that, just one. <laughs> anyway, at the beginning of your upkeep, you gain X life, where X is the number of cards in your hand, minus four. Now, if you'd like to add this card to your collection, the Antiquities version's a little expensive. It's around 33 bucks, and now it's been reprinted several times. And I'm going to let you know a little secret. Here is the card that you play with it. And that is this card, Reliquary Tower. Uh, this land card, you have no maximum hand size. Put four of those in your deck. It's a really cheap card. Use it with Ivory Tower and just start gaining life. So these two go great in a white deck. And if you build your white deck correctly, you should be gaining lots of life with it. All right, and next up, we have a card I don't like being played on me, but I like to play with it. And that is Millstone. It casts for two. Tap two, tap it, target player mills two cards. And of course, many of you probably know by now that when you mill a card, it means you take the card, take uh, the cards off the top of your library and put them in your graveyard. Now, my blue deck that I have, my mono blue, is all about counters and about milling. So as long as I'm playing against somebody with a, with a nice 60 card deck, they're in trouble. And if you'd like to add this card to your collection, it won't cost you too much. It's currently worth around $17, and it has been reprinted several times. All right, next up we have a card that I have a special place in my heart for. I don't know why. Maybe because the creature looks so sad. I don't know. Uh, this is Onulet, and this artifact creature casts for three. It's a 2-2. Two -two. When Onulet dies, you gain two life. And yep, I got a few of these in several decks, actually. If you like to add this sad, pathetic little creature to your collection, it won't cost you too much. It's currently worth around $4.19, and it has been reprinted two times. All right, and next up, we have another very, very practical card, and that is Ornithopter. It's obviously very practical because this card has been reprinted several, several times. And here's why. Uh, this artifact flying zero two creature casts for zero. Yeah, it casts for zero and is a zero two flyer. Uh, it's a nice blocker. What can I say? If you'd like to add this to your collection, it will currently cost you around five dollars and fifty five cents, and it has been reprinted ungodly numbers of times. So grab a bunch of them and throw them in your decks. You got a free blocker. All right, and next up we have a really cool card. I love the artwork on this. I just really do. It looks so kooky. And this is Primal Clay. Artifact creature cast for four. As Primal Clay enters the battlefield, it becomes your choice of a 3-3 three, three artifact creature, a 2-2 two, two artifact creature with flying, or a 1-6 wall artifact creature with defender in addition to its other types. A creature with defender can't attack. And if you would like to add this very practical card to your collection or put it in a deck, it won't cost you too much. It's currently worth around $5.20, and it has been reprinted several times. All right, and next up we have Shapeshifter. I love the artwork on this one, too. Uh, this artifact creature casts for six. As Shapeshifter enters the battlefield, choose a number between zero and seven. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may choose a number between 0 and 7. Shapeshifter's power is equal to the last chosen number, and its toughness is equal to 7 minus that number. So you could have 1, 6, a 5, 2, a 2, 5. You get the point. And you change it every upkeep, so this card can really come in handy. 
It's a rare card, but it's not a real expensive rare. It will currently cost you around 16 bucks, and it has been reprinted a few times. All right, and next up we have a very useful card. I can't say practical because it's an expensive card. It's Suchi, which kind of sounds like a Japanese delicacy. Anyway, uh, this artifact creature is a 4-4. It casts for 4. When Suchi dies, add 4 colorless mana. Nice. So while it's, on, while it's dying, it helps you out on its way to the graveyard. Pretty cool. What's not cool is the price. It's currently worth around 94 bucks, and it has not been reprinted. All right, if you like what Suchi does, but you don't want to spend that kind of money on a card, here's an alternative. This is a Cathodian. It casts for three. Uh, it's a 3-3. Three, three. When Cathodian dies, add three colorless. Yeah, it's one less, but, you know, it's the best you're going to get, especially that this card is only worth 33 cents. All right, and next up we have Tablet of Epitier. Uh, this artifact casts for one. Whenever an artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay one. If you do, you gain one life. Lose an artifact, gain a life. Nice. If you'd like to add this card to your collection, it's not going to cost you very much, as it is currently worth 81 cents. However, it is, was not reprinted. All right, and next up we have Tano's Wand. We have Tano's Wand. Uh, Tano's wand, excuse me. Uh, this artifact casts for four. Tap two, tap it. Target creature with power two or less can't be blocked this turn. So, really a good card to use in a goblin deck. Yeah, for sure. If you'd like to add this card to your collection, it's not going to cost you too much. It's only worth around $3.34, and it has been reprinted several times. All right, and we have the card that goes with Cursed Rack, and that is The Rack. And the artwork is awesome. It was done by the same guy, Richard Thomas. This card casts for one. As the Rack enters the battlefield, choose an opponent. At the beginning of the chosen player's upkeep, the Rack deals X damage to that player, where X is three minus the number of cards in their hand. Oh, yeah. If you'd like to add this card to your collection and pair it up with Cursed Rack and watch a grown person weep, it's not going to cost you too much. The Antiquities version is around 21 bucks, and it has been reprinted several times. All right, next up we have Urza's Chalice. Uh, you see, finally see something with his name on it, even though you don't, you cannot play as either Urza or Mishra for many, many years. I don't wonder if they wondered about that back then. All right, this card casts for one. Whenever a player casts an artifact spell, you may pay one. If you do, you gain one life. And the best part about this card is it's not expensive. It will currently cost you around $1, and it was not reprinted. All right, and next up we have one of the coolest walls ever, and that is Wall of Spears. Uh, this artifact creature casts for three. It, ha it is Defender, of course. This creature can't attack, but it does have First Strike, and it's a 2-3. Gotta love it. If you would like to put this wall in one of your decks, it's not going to cost you very much. It's currently worth around $3.35, and it has been reprinted several times. All right, and next we have Weak Stone. Uh, this artifact casts for four. Attacking creatures get plus, uh, excuse me, negative one, negative zero. Not bad, huh? This card is going to set you back a little bit. It's currently worth around $15.21. However, there is a recent card that just came out not too long ago that does the same thing. And that is Boarded Window. It casts for three. Creatures attacking you get negative one, negative zero. At the beginning of each end step, if you were dealt four or more damage this turn, exile Boarded Window. Now, this is really fun against Goblin decks. And the best part, this card is only worth two cents. And our final artifact for today is Yoshin Soldier. Uh, this artifact creature casts for three. It has Vigilance. And it's a 1-4. Not bad, huh? If you like to add this card to your collection, or better yet, put it in a deck, especially in newer decks where soldiers actually help pump each other and give each other more abilities 
it's not going to cost you very much at all. This card is currently worth $1.12, and it has been reprinted several times. All right, now we're going into lands, and I'm only going to talk about two types of the lands, excuse me. And that is, first one is Mishra's Factory. This is a highly sought-after card by collectors. Um, like I said, it's a land. Tap it, add one colorless. Tap one, Mishra's Factory becomes a 2-2 assembly worker artifact creature until end of turn. It's still a land. Tap it, target assembly worker creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. The good thing is, is that if you would like to add these to your deck, there are a lot of newer cards that really go along with it. Um, however, these cards are a bit on the expensive side. Uh, there are four different varieties. What you're looking at here is the, um, this is what we call, which one is this? This is the Fall Mishra, I believe. Yes, this is the Fall Mishra card, or the D card. And it's the, and, no, the C card, excuse me. And this card is worth $143.66. All right, and next we have uh, the A card, uh, or the Spring Mishra's Factory, and this card is worth $66.89. Then you have the Summer uh, Mishra's Factory. This card is worth around $171.23. And finally, we have my personal favorite, and I just love the artwork on this card, and the Winter Mishra's Factory. Uh, this one's quite expensive. It will currently cost you around $371.62. Out of all the cards... In this collection, the only one that was ever reprinted uh, was the Fall Mishra's Factory. All right, and next we have Strip Mine. Now, this is another card that has a few different variations. Actually, it has four, same as uh, the Winter Mi the Mishra's Factory. And how this, what this land card does is tap it, add one colorless. Tap, Sacrifice, Strip Mine, Destroy, Target Land. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is currently the A card you're looking at right here, and it's the least expensive, and it is worth around $61.31. And this one has been reprinted a few times. Okay, and next we have the B uh, Strip Mine. Maybe this is the one that was reprinted. I can't tell because I think it was maybe this one. The artwork is really close on a couple of these. Uh, this one's worth a little bit more. This one will cost you $144.80. And this is the C uh, strip mine. This one will run you $149.99. And finally, we have the D. This one will run you around $118.21. So... Is there a card out there that does the same thing or close to the same thing that Strip Mine does for a lot less money? Well, yes, there are. First one is Tectonic Edge. Uh, it gives you one colorless. Tap one, tap it, sacrifice Tectonic Edge. Destroy target non-basic land. Activate this ability only if an opponent controls four or more lands. Now, this one, this one's kind of weird. I just wanted to mention it because it's like, huh? All right, uh, it, Ghost Quarter, it will give you one colorless. Sack Tap, Sacrifice Ghost Quarter, destroy target land. Its controller may search their library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle their library. Okay, so you're destroying one land so they can get another. Hmm. Maybe uh, if it's one that makes creatures or if it's a dual land, but okay. And that does it. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know it went kind of long, but this chant, this uh, series is more like a podcast than a epi than a actual YouTube video, anyway. Which makes me wonder if I should try to put this on a on a podcast format. Uh, if you guys did enjoy today's video, let me know by giving me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the bell down there so you'll be notified when I upload new videos of any kind. And what's next? Well, next up, we're going to discuss one of my least favorite, and not just mine, but a lot of other people's least favorite expansion, that's Fallen Empires. Believe it or not, this, this small set does have some really great cards in it. Not a lot, but a few. So next week's episode is definitely going to make up for as long as this one was, because it's going to be a very short episode. So 
Till next time I see you, uh, take care of yourselves. If you'd like to uh, game with me, you can meet me in the arena. My username is ClassicGamer74. All one word, uh, capital C, small g. And until next time, Planeswalkers, I will see you in the arena. Take care. Bye for now.